Training module 6.1, initial conditions at the start of the simulation period. In this slide we see an overview of aqua crop, which simulates the interaction between crop and soil, and that interaction is affected by management. To run aqua crop, we need to specify the conditions at the upper and at the lower boundary, and you need also to specify the initial conditions. The learning objectives for this training module are to know the required initial conditions at the start of the simulation period. We see that the simulation period does not need to coincide necessarily with the growing cycle. The initial conditions refer to the initial soil water content and soil salinity. If the simulation starts during the growing cycle, then of course also the initial canopy cover and rooting depth needs to be specified. Let's focus first on the initial soil water content. A good estimate of the initial soil water content is essential, since it strongly affects the simulation of the crop development, transpiration, biomass production and crop yield. So there is really a need for a good estimation and you can obtain that by measurements. Measurements of the soil water content, sampling of the soil profile at sowing planting. Since you define the initial condition at the moment of sowing and planting, the growing cycle and the simulation period overlap. The start of the simulation period is the planting date. Sampling of the soil profile at sowing planting consists in sampling at different depths. Topsoil, we take a soil sample, we determine the mass water content and by multiplying it with the bulk density you get the volumetric water content. This is repeated at different depths of the soil profile. Defining the initial soil water content consists in specifying the volumetric water content at various depths in aqua crop. After specifying the climate, the crop with its planting date and the soil, I need now to specify the initial conditions at the planting date. I click on initial conditions. This opens the file management menu and I'm going to update my initial conditions. I'm interested here in the initial soil water content, which I can specify in this screen. With the help of this menu, I can specify what is the soil water content at different depths. Let's assume that I have specified at three depths. I can change the thickness of each of those layers and the water content, which was 35 volumetric water content in the topsoil, 20 in the subsoil, and 15 in the lower soil. Instead of specifying it as water contents for different layers, I can also specify it at particular depths, which makes my soil water profile more smoothly. If this was the initial soil water content, I can save that on disk. I will create an initial soil water content file. I specify the file name, Bru-ini, and I can add a description. I save it and now I can run my simulation. I can see that the initial soil water content at the start of the simulation period is the one which was specified earlier. Instead of sampling of the soil profile, we can also estimate the initial soil water content. The estimate does not necessarily refers to the moment at planting. 
as such the simulation period is no longer linked with the growing cycle. Let me present you that with two examples. The first one is for northwest of Europe. In the middle of the winter we have rainfall but evapotranspiration is very low. In this graph you see the rainfall and the ET node for Brussels. We can see that due to the absence of evapotranspiration but still an important rainfall that in winter the soil will be at field capacity. So I'm quite sure that at the beginning of January my soil will be at field capacity. So I will take that as an estimate of the initial soil water content. So I start my simulation at the 1st of January. Of course the crops are not planted at that day. I start my simulation with a bare soil. But thanks to that soil water balance which is in aqua crop, it will keep track of incoming water by rainfall and losses of water by depercolation and soil evaporation. For every day aqua crop will update the soil water content till I reach the 1st of May, which is my planting date. So by specifying what is the soil water content on the 1st of January, Aquacrop can estimate the water content at the first day of planting, which is in this example the 1st May. And starting from then, Aquacrop will continue to run the soil water balance, but of course now there is also transpiration. We see that in this example the simulation period is no longer linked with the growing cycle. In this example I'm growing a crop from the 1st of May in Brussels on a loamy soil. Since I do not know the initial soil water content on the 1st of May, I start my simulation period on the date at which I can make a good estimate of the initial soil water content. So that is on the 1st of January. Therefore I first go to unlink the simulation period with the growing period. I click on simulation period and here I can say that my simulation period does not start on the 1st of May but on the 1st of January. And as a consequence we see that the simulation period is no longer linked with the growing cycle. I return to the main menu and now the next step is to specify the initial conditions at the first day of the simulation. Therefore I go to the initial condition button and I'm going to update the initial conditions. I'm interested in the soil water content. By clicking on these buttons I can put the whole soil water profile at saturation, field capacity, wilting point or at a specific percentage of tau. In this case my soil profile is at field capacity. Let me save that one on disk. It is loam field capacity and a description I save it and now I can run a simulation a simulation which will start on the 1st of January with a soil at field capacity. I click on run and I can see that indeed the soil water content is at field capacity. Let me advance one day. I start my simulation. I can see that during the winter rainfall is coming in which keeps my soil at field capacity.
let me now advance till the beginning of the growing season, which was 1st of May, so I will advance till 3rd of April. And I look again at the soil water profile. I can see now that my topsoil is very dry due to soil evaporation, but my subsoil is still very wet. These are the initial conditions for the next day, which is the 1st of May, on which my crop is planted. And starting from now, AquaCrop simulates the the soil water balance and the crop development, transpiration, biomass production and final yield. Another example is for the Mediterranean region at the end of summer. In that period, rainfall is zero, but reference evapotranspiration is very high. Here we see the rainfall and the evapotranspiration for Tunis. And we can see that at the middle of August, the soil water content will be close to wilting point due to the absence of rain and the high reference evapotranspiration. So when running a simulation for a rain-fed crop in the Mediterranean region, I can start my simulation at the 15th of August. The soil water content is at wilting point. I start my simulation with a bare soil and with the help of the soil water balance, AquaCrop will update the soil water content by taking into account rainfall, pre-irrigations, capillary rise, depercolation and soil evaporation. If then at 10th of November we have sowing, AquaCrop has adjusted the soil water content by keeping track of all the fluxes. Starting from 10th of November, the soil water balance now consider also crop transpiration. So once again, in this example, the simulation period is not linked to growing cycle. In this example, I'm running a simulation for winter wheat, which is planted on the 10th of November in Tunisia on a sandy loam soil. Since I do not know the initial water content at the 10th of November, I start my simulation from 15th of August because at that moment I know that my soil is at wilting point. Therefore, I'm going to unlink my simulation period from the growing cycle. So I don't start on the 10th of November, but on August 15. Subsequently, I will specify the initial conditions by clicking here and telling that my soil is at permanent wilting point. I save it. And now I can run my simulation. My simulation starts at August 15 and I can see that indeed I have a very dry soil. By advancing day per day I can see that in the beginning of the simulation my topsoil becomes even drier than wilting point. That's indeed possible. By soil evaporation, topsoils can become air dry. And I have to wait till somewhere in September, there we are, some rain enters and wet the topsoil. I have to continue, however, till the 10th of November, because that is my planting date. More rain is coming. Now I am at the 5th, the 6th, the 7th, the 8th 
and the 9th of November, which is the day before planting. That is the initial soil water content at the start of planting. On the 10th of November, my crop is planted and starts growing. So by clicking here, I go directly to the end of the simulation and I see that AquaCrop was able to determine the biomass and the final crop yield for this simulation. A final way to know the initial soil water content is keep the values from a previous run. So it means by linking simulation runs to each other. If I want to consider the simulated soil water content at the end of the simulation run as the initial soil water content for the next simulation run, I need to change a parameter. That is done here in the initial condition menu by clicking on the program settings. There are several tab sheet and the tab sheet I'm interested in is, is this one. And it says each time you start a new simulation period, the initial conditions as specified in your menu will be considered. If I click now on the keep button, then only for the first run, the initial conditions as specified in my file will be considered, but for each successive run, the soil water content at the end of the simulation period becomes now the initial soil water content for the next simulation period. I return to my main menu. I can see that AquaCrop does not allow me to change the soil profile between simulation runs. That is because soil water content from one simulation run has to be transferred to another simulation run. And that of course requires the same soil conditions.